Hello. Today, in episode four, we are going to look at the group of the rectangle. Uh, there are not many molecules that are specifically rectangular shaped, but a very important class of molecules that are rectangularly shaped are the substituted ethylenes. So with ethylene, we see that we have a C double bond C in the center. Uh, and in the same plane, in this particular case, we have ethylene. Each of the four green dots would be a hydrogen atom. This particular molecule has a point group symmetry which we call D2H. And we'll show in a second to prove that it has a D2 rotation. So we can set up our model and we put our eraser there. And we can put our molecules on top and put our pin in there. There we go. So as you recall, finding the high order rotation axis is one of the important things we want to do for any new molecule that we meet. So let's see if we can rotate by 180 degrees. Let's see if we can do that. Now if we rotate by 180 degrees, we are lined up exactly as we were before. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the letter C looks a little different, but we're using C to represent a carbon atom which would be shaped like a circle. So we would not see one side or the other of a C if we turn a carbon atom around. In reality, it's so small that we consider it to be a perfect sphere or a point. So the important thing is the orange dots, the hydrogens in this particular case, which line up with each other after we do a C2 operation. And we see again if we do another C2 operation, that again the substituents, the green dots, all line up, which shows that this particular molecule has a C2 operation as a member of the group. It's very common when students first meet ethylene and they notice that it has four identical substituents to automatically assume that it might belong to the point group D4H as if it were a square. But an important thing to keep in mind, as we'll see in this case, is that if we rotate by 90 degrees, not only do the hydrogen atoms not quite line up, but if we were to look through this top piece of paper, we would notice that at the bottom, the carbon-carbon double bond is pointing horizontally, whereas now that we've rotated by 90 degrees, the carbon-carbon bond is, is vertical. So it does not have a C4 operation. So that's an important thing to keep in mind, and there are many, many important substituted ethylene compounds. So let's see where the other high order rotation axis will be. Uh, if we take our molecule and rotate it this sort of way, we rotate it like that, we see that's a C2 operation. And we can do another C2 just to bring it back to see what it looked like. And we see that in each case, if we do this particular C2 rotation, that the green dots will line up with each other. So it says that going along this way, we have a C2 axis, just as we have a C2 axis coming out perpendicular normal to the paper. We also have one more C2 axis, which is along the carbon-carbon double bond. So again, we can rotate it this way, and we see that the hydrogens are exactly where they were before, and we do it one more time, and we get back to where we started from. So we see that it has a number of C2s. The high order rotation axis is the C2, and by convention, it's considered to come out of the paper towards you. Uh, the, there are also two C2s that are perpendicular to that particular high order rotation axis, which makes this a D group. So one of the C2s comes this way, the other C2 comes that way, and our high order rotation axis C2, which we sometimes call C2Z, uh, because it's, we define the Z axis to be the high order rotation axis in most cases. Now it also has some other important symmetry operations. One of the most important ones, it has a horizontal mirror. So let's see where the horizontal mirror is. We have a mirror in the mirror of the plane. So there we have our, our mirror. And in this case, it really is a horizontal mirror because the mirror is perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. So let's see if we can see some of the other mirror planes actually using a mirror. So along this line, by using our model method, we can show that it has a mirror plane by folding along the line. And we see that when we do that, the green atoms line up with each other. If we go along the other axis, we see another um, uh, vertical mirror, sigma v. We fold along this way, and we can see that they line up exactly. So that tells us that we have two mirror planes. But let's see if we can actually use a mirror to show that we have a mirror plane. 
And that's what I'm going to try to do here. So the mirror plane would be along there. Ah, we can actually see it. So we put the mirror plane there. I can see the second half of the molecule reflected in it. And then the key thing is to be able to pick it up and see that if we remove the mirror, I'm very careful about it. If I remove the mirror, that lined up exactly. We actually had behind it what we would see with the mirror. It's almost like the Renny Magritte paintings where he has an easel in front of an open window. And what you see on the painting is exactly what you would see, you would have seen, if the easel were not there and you had directly looked through the mirror. So um, I highly recommend the art of Rene Magritte and any of the other surrealists if you're a chemist or a, uh, or a scientist. So we can see that one particular uh, vertical mirror there. And let's see if we can find the other one. You can use the other one by using a mirror. So here, by lining up the mirror, we can actually see the reflection of the molecule in the mirror. And we can see that it looks like the original ethylene molecule. So here we can actually use a mirror to demonstrate a mirror plane. Then what we're going to do is the same thing that we do all the time is we're going to reduce the symmetry. We're going to change the substitution pattern and see what new point group symmetries we can find. An important class of substituted ethylenes would be the trans substituents. They're trans because they're on opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond. So let's see what the point group symmetry of this one. And this is a point group which is virtually guaranteed to stump students. This one is one of the ones they have the most difficulty with. So let's see. Again, we always want to find the high order rotation axis. That's kind of our first plane of attack in every case. So let's put our pin in there and see if we have a high order rotation axis that's perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. So let's rotate by 180 degrees counterclockwise. There we go. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And we see that if we rotate by 180 degrees, our C2 operation, that the substituents line up perfectly. So this tells us that we have a C2 operation as a operation of the group. Now, there's also a mirror plane in the plane of the molecule. So we have a mirror plane going between here. And that is our horizontal mirror in this case. So this is a molecule that has a new point group called C2H. And the, the part of the reason why it's confusing is there's an assumption that this must have other mirror planes other than the horizontal mirror. But it doesn't, and we can show that pretty quickly. If we fold the molecule in half along the, uh, the line that we had done before to see if there's a mirror plane this way, we see that when we fold over, orange goes to green and green goes to orange. So there's not a mirror plane along this axis. There is not one there. So let's try along the other main axis, the axis of the carbon-carbon double bond. So again, we line it up, and we see that they don't line up. Orange goes to green, green goes to orange. And for that same reasoning, we can also, if we thought there might be uh, additional C2s, we try to rotate this way, we see that green goes to where the orange does. And then we can we flip back. Again, orange goes to green. It tells us that we don't have a C2 operation along this particular axis. So we have an interesting set of symmetry operations for this particular point group. It's a group called C2H, H for horizontal mirror, not C2V, which is a very common point group. It has the identity, which all of them do. It has a C2 operation. It has a horizontal mirror and has one additional symmetry operation, which we are going to demonstrate later on, called inversion. So for any, if I start from the center point here, this is our center of inversion, this particular push pin point. If I go in any particular direction, a certain distance, and hit it at him, so say if I go this direction to hit a green, then if I go in the exact opposite direction by the same distance, I have to also hit a green, and we do. And we see that if I go a certain distance from the center point to hit orange, and then I go the same distance in the opposite direction, I also hit an orange. So this tells us that we have a symmetry operation called inversion, and that we have a center of inversion. There's a fancy word that we use in group theory to refer to molecules that have a center of inversion. We say that they are centrosymmetric. Centrosymmetric molecules are very, very easy to identify by spectroscopy. And in fact, if you have access to Raman spectroscopy and infrared, if you do both infrared and IR spectroscopy on a molecule like this, you'll notice something very interesting. 
that bands will either appear in Robin or they will appear in infrared, but not both. So when we have a situation like that, where a band is in either one or the other, but not both, that tells us immediately that we have a molecule that has a center of inversion. We have a molecule that is centrosymmetric. So that is one of the most important applications of group theory to spectroscopy and the elucidation of the structure of molecules. So we can determine a great deal of the structure of a molecule by doing the uh, complementary test of Raman and IR spectroscopy, even beyond what we can tell from IR spectroscopy, such as we have carbon-carbon double bond or carbon-carbon triple bond or various other uh, functional groups.